in the statistics example we're going to work through today. We're going to look at frequency distributions, how to create a, a histogram, and how to interpret it. And the histogram is basically a visualization of the underlying data. We're going to pay particular attention in this video to variables that are non-orderable and discrete. Let's go ahead and put some data up here and see what we have. You'll notice that this particular frequency distribution, which looks very typical and is produced by many different statistical packages, in this case the application I used was Stata, we see the variable over on the left and it says marital status. And here I have all my categories, married, widowed, divorced, separated, never married. So these are discrete and by that we mean that these categories are mutually exclusive and exhaustive. And they're non-orderable because even though they're shown in a particular order here, I might prefer a different order and it wouldn't affect my interpretation. The next column is labeled FREQ, which stands for frequency, and that's our basic count of all those values. You can see at the bottom we get this number 1974, and that value is the total number of cases available to us. 900 people were married, 163 are widowed, 317 divorced, and so forth. Those frequencies have been converted to percentages in the next column. So the next column we see that the 900 married people are basically 45.59% of all of the 1,974 people. Um, I, of course, would probably round this a little bit. I think 45 uh, or 46% would be fine, and 8% and 16% and so forth. But that's up to, up to you and the nature of the problem, how much precision you actually need. And then the last column we get is cumulative percentages. And you'll notice at the bottom they sum to 100%. And if we were looking for things like the median, we, um, which isn't appropriate for this variable, we would use this column. For this particular example, it's not going to be important for us. What we're going to do is we're going to plot the column labeled percent. And that's the most typical thing. And what I'm going to do at the bottom um, is I'm going to start laying out the graphic. And I'll make one that really won't work at first, but it'll show you some of the issues. And then we can go, can go back and fix it. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and lay out my y-axis here and then I'm going to lay out my x-axis. This is where my drawing is very poor and I apologize for that. Over here we're going to put numbers in that are going to indicate the percentages. So for example I might have, if I move up two spaces, I might have 10% 20, 30, 40, 50, and so forth. There we go, we've got those labeled in. And often you'll want to put in little tick marks. That, that makes it a little bit easier to do things. And then down here on this x-axis, we're going to go ahead and put in our categories. So I'll take these in order, and we can see up here that our marital status variable the married people are 45.59%. So I'll come over here and just to kind of take a look. So 45 is right about here. It's a hair over that. I'm going to start here. And I'm just going to draw a line down. And then I'm going to make these columns, oh, I don't know, let's make them one, two, three, four. Yeah, let's just make them four wide. And up and over. And then I want to label this. like that. Now we could shade this in or color it in anything we want but we'll just start with that. I go and look at my next category which is widowed and that's about 8% and so I'm gonna leave a gap because you do that with the non-orderable discretes and I'll come over to this line over here and I'll come up there's five and eight should be about there and I'll draw my vertical and I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, and draw my vertical and over. And there's my, I'm just gonna use a W for widowed because my handwriting is so bad. So there's my histogram. Now I said this wasn't gonna be perfect and it certainly isn't. It'd be nice if I had a ruler and could draw straight lines and if I had nicer handwriting, but I don't. So I'm gonna go ahead and live with this one. But one thing you'll notice over here on my scale is that 
I really only have to go to 50%. I went to 100 because I know it's a percentage and I thought I could leave a little extra space, but I don't need it. What I should have done is I should have looked up here and said, geez, that biggest number is 45%, and then pick some you know nice number above that, like 50%. So I'm going to redraw this. And to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, turn this layer off and just redo my drawing and let's just see if I can't make this a little bit better I need a digital ruler to make a straight line and now I know I need to go to 50 so if I went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and put a tick mark there and say well that's 10 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 20 gives me a little more space I can still kind of guesstimate and interpolate now I want to go to 45 percent so that's again going to be about halfway between these things and I'll just come off here a little bit and I can still keep them four columns wide if I want, or four squares wide. And there's my married column. And then 8.2 per 6, you can see now that the scale is a little bit easier to see. So that's just to guesstimate. Widowed and I would put my other columns over there. So the thing to keep in mind here with this kind of histogram, when you have non-orderable discrete variables, first of all, notice that my bars don't touch. That's sort of an indication that these things don't get pushed together. They don't imply order or magnitude. Because on most of our graphs, as we go in this direction, we usually go from small values to large values. Here, the values don't matter marital or married is not any greater or less than never married also note that the height of the columns how high that column is is either going to be pegged to the percentages like I did here or the frequencies you can do it either way but I think it's pretty standard to do percentages because then you can compare across these graphics where if you do frequencies and you have different number of cases it's much harder to make a comparison let's go ahead and look at a uh, graph that I created and you can see that if you use software, this was created in Stata, and I kind of kept a nice black and gray, black and white um, scheme here. Um, I've done the, the bars in the same order that they're laid out here. They've got the separation. It goes to 50. I have tick marks and lines to help me kind of read across here, these lines right here that go across, make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. A good description, and then down here, a source. What we'd like to be able to do is to go from this graphic down here to this graphic up here. Now when you're first starting I think there's a lot of value in drawing these things by hand even though they look very shaky but this will be perfectly acceptable for your homework assignment if you don't want to learn a, st a statistical package or a drawing package just do them by hand on a piece of graph paper that will be um, very useful for you to do and um, when you become more used to drawing these things and what they should look like then you're going to be in a position to say geez maybe I should learn how to use uh, Google Docs or Excel some kind of spreadsheet or SPSS or some other statistical application and produce this nice graphic over here earlier in the video we showed you how to uh, make a histogram for discrete orderable data by hand and uh, my drawing abilities aren't very good so I actually prefer to use software so I'm going to show you a pretty quick way to do this with a Google Docs spreadsheet if you haven't used a spreadsheet it's definitely something you should learn while you're in college it's a great skill but I'm going to use very minimal features here to produce that discrete orderable histogram that I drew by hand before the first thing I'm going to do in the, my columns up here I'm going to go to cell A1 right up here and I'm going to type in uh, the name of my variable which is marital status technically I don't really require this but um, it just helps me keep track of what's in my little spreadsheet and then I'm going to type in percent because that will be the next column and that'll contain the numbers remember I had different categories here and I'm just going to go straight down the spreadsheet so now I'm in cell A2 
and I'm going to type in married, widowed, divorced, separated, and never married. And then I'm going to go up here to cell B2 and enter the numbers that we uh, I showed you earlier. So there were 45.59%, and I hit enter and go down to the next row, 8.26%, 16.06%, 3.44%, 3 and 26.65%. Okay, so far so good. What I'm going to do next is... Um, highlight this range of data. Uh, in fact, maybe I'll just highlight this section here. And I come up to this icon over here that looks like a histogram. And I'll click on it. And it shows me the ranges that have been selected. It gives me a preview of the chart. And in this case, it's giving me a pie chart, which isn't what I want. I really want this, uh, what they're going to call a column chart. That looks pretty good so far. And um, I could switch the rows and columns, which I don't really want to do. Um, other options here, but so far this looks pretty good. And I'm going to now click on Customize. And I can enter things like a chart title. Um, something like that. And um, I've got a legend over here, this blue dot. I don't think I really need the legend. So I think I'm going to try to shut that off at some point. Here we go. I'll say none. Not really needed. Um, what else can I do here? Oh, I can change my axis, my horizontal axis title. I'm just going to highlight that and backspace over it because I don't want a title there. Okay. And then I will look at my left vertical. And I'll type in percent. And now I can put in a minimum and a maximum. Notice that um, Google Docs has given me 0 to 60. My minimum is 0, my maximum 60. And I wanted 50, so I'll type in 0 and then 50 over here. Let's see what that does. I'm just going to move my cursor to percent. <clears throat> well, it, that really didn't work very well. You can see that I don't actually get to 50, and I don't know how tall that column is. I can see it's 45.59. So I'm just going to move this up a little bit to 55. And see how that looks? Okay, that looks pretty good. And I can just keep going down here and see if there's any other options I want to change. But I think I'm pretty happy with all of these options. You know, here's where I could change the color of the uh, the bars if I like, but I, I'll take the blue, and then I'm going to click Insert, and I can move this graphic around a little bit to keep it off my numbers, and there it is, a perfectly passable frequency histogram for discrete, non-orderable data. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of other things here to just make this a little bit nicer. To help the interpretation of the data, I'm going to change the order of the bars so that they go from the uh, highest to the lowest categories so we can see which are the most prevalent marital statuses. And to do that, I'm just going to highlight this range of data up here. And I'm going to go to Data. And I'm going to say, let's sort this range of data. And now I can pick. I need to. I don't want to sort by column A. That'll put it in alphabetical order from married through never married. So I'm going to say column B. And I want to go from in a descending order from the greatest to the smallest. Now when I click sort, it's going to go ahead and sort my actual data in the spreadsheet. And then the chart, the graphic, will be updated to reflect that. Let's see what we get. There we go. And one last thing, notice how these labels are staggered, the married, never married, because, you know, never married is such a wide uh, label that, that um, the Google Docs is trying to keep them from the labels from colliding with each other. If I click in the graphic and then click Quick Edit, now, and when I highlight areas here, I can go ahead and edit them. I'm just going to click on this and click this slant button and take 30%. And I think that looks OK. And it's certainly uh, better than, than what we had before. And this is a lot better than I can draw by hand and a lot more accurate. 
So you can see that making a histogram is a pretty easy thing to do, but now if you want to turn it in with your homework assignment, we'd like a way to capture this image and put it into a file like some kind of word file, word processing file, or just have a, a graphic file that you can share with people. It's very easy to do with the Google Docs. Uh, actually, there's many ways you could do it. You could do a screen capture, but I think this will work a little bit easier. I'm going to put my uh, cursor over the graphic and then click on it. And you'll see here we have my view mode, my edit, quick edit mode. But over here I have a drop down menu. And I'm going to take a look at that. So I could do all my advanced editing, delete the chart, and so forth. But right here I can save the image. So I'm going to click on that. And I have the option to open the image in a viewer. In this case, my computer set up to use the Picasa viewer. Or I can save the file and it's going to be called chart underscore one dot png. I'm going to go ahead and save this file because you know maybe I want to put it in a Word document so I can upload it to Canvas or uh, you know email the paper to somebody. Click on OK. It's going to ask me where I want to download. I'm just going to leave the default here to my downloads uh, directory and click Save. Now I'll go to my desktop I'm going to open up a Windows Explorer, go to my downloads, and here's the file chart1.png. And I'm just going to double click on that and take a look. And there it is. I can zoom in a little bit. Let's get a little bit better look at it. Not a little too much. There we go. Um, you know, you can see it's a little pixelated and not perfect when it's blown up, but this is a pretty large monitor. But this would be a great graphic to turn in with your homework assignment at relatively low cost. So again, I encourage you to work with spreadsheets. Uh, it's something you should learn while you're in college. If you have to teach yourself, that's okay. You'll probably learn more if you put your own time in on it. And you can be producing these kinds of graphics for your papers and courses or the clubs that you participate in and uh, you know, shed some light on what's going on in the social world. Um, that's it for this example. We're going to go through some others with frequencies in a little bit, and they become slightly more complicated.